um, because there are more people who would like to watch today's recording, but were not available to participate live. So um, we are trying to make sure we are not recording anyone's names. Don't worry, we are focusing on the active speaker in the, in, on the main screen. Um, and now it's my great pleasure to introduce the two main guests of today, our expert speakers on US history, uh, Alex and Nick. So Alex and Nick, if you could please wave to the audience. Uh, Alex was uh, an English teaching assistant in the Czech Republic at Inznojmo. She taught for 10 months at Zdravotnická škola in Znojmo. And together with her students and with students at the Znojmo Gymnasium, she also ran a journalism club and did many fun journalism related trips and field trips with her students to Prague, to Czech television, to Czech, uh, to Radio Free Europe and other fun things. Um, and the other speaker, uh, our speaker number two is Nick. Nick was placed uh, in Trutnov. His host institutions were Střední Průmyslová škola in Trutnov and also Městské gymnázium Úpice. And um, uh, Nick was, um, Nick loves music and jazz specifically, and he was an active member of the local jazz band. He played uh, drums and he also played saxophone and probably some other things as well. I personally went to a concert where he rapped a famous Eminem song. So, uh, you know, both both of today's uh, speakers are really uh, people of uh, many, many diverse skills. Uh, and my surprise for, for the presenters is that I specifically invited your mentors, guys, from your time in the Czech Republic. So I think your mentors, uh, all, all three of your mentors should be in the audience. So make sure to greet them as well. And uh, now I'm passing it to Alex so that she can start her presentation and the introductions of Nick and Alex are incorporated right into the presentations. So have fun. Thank you so much, Christina. I really appreciate that. It was a lovely introduction. Um, I want to say hello to everybody here. Welcome, welcome. Um, both Nick and myself are so happy to have you all here today. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. I'm going to start sharing my screen uh, and we're going to be looking at the presentation here. All right. So today's topic is U.S. history. Um, and just to introduce ourselves and who we are. So again, my name is Alex Linus. As Christina mentioned, uh, I had the wonderful privilege of teaching at a school for nursing in Znoimo. Um, a beautiful city. I really loved being in the Czech Republic and meeting new people and being able to see all of these beautiful sights and try amazing food. So I really enjoyed it. I was an English teaching assistant from 2018 to 2019. Um, and again, as Christina mentioned, uh, my students, um, they, I, we had an after school journalism club in collaboration with the gymnasium. And we got to go and do some really cool things such as going to the Czech television studios, which we can see in this bottom picture here. Um, and we went on a tour with Martin Reznicek, which was a really cool experience. And I'll pass it over to Nick. Sure, hello everyone. My name is Nick. Thank you again for the introductions. Uh, like Christina said, I taught English from 2018 to 2019 in Trutnov, and do pizza. Um, I was in a jazz band in Trutnov. We had an English club in Upica. I think I see some familiar faces in the Zoom from that. But yeah, I loved my time in the Czech Republic. I miss it very much. But I'm very excited to be teaching uh, US history with you all today. And just a little bit about where Nick and I are located. So we have this great big country, the United States. I am up here at the top in Boston, which is in the state of Massachusetts. Um, and Nick is over uh, near New York City. Um, and we can see here on the map, they look 
sort of close together, but keeping in mind the U.S. is a very big country, we really are about four hours apart driving, which really isn't too far for the U.S., but just to give you an idea of where we are located. And additionally, because we're talking about U.S. history, we also wanted to mention where the U.S. capital is, which is Washington, D.C. So all of our government um, happens right over here in Washington, D.C. All right, and so where we taught, as mentioned, Nick was in Trutnov and I was in Znoimo, so complete opposite ends of the country. Um, and now we want to ask, where, where are you all? Where do you go to school? Um, so you can feel free to show us on the map. Um, there is a feature called annotate that you should be able to see by clicking um, view and options. And there should be a little pencil where you can annotate where you're calling in from or where you go to school. We'd love to see where you all are located. And let us know if you have any trouble finding that feature. It's called annotate. This is awesome. I'm seeing lots of a few people in Prague. This is nice. It's great to see where everybody is calling in from. Great, very cool. We have people from all over the country and that's awesome to see. All right, awesome. Cool, well, thank you so much for participating. We appreciate that. Again, really nice to see where everybody is calling in from. All right, so I'm gonna go over to our next slide. Um, and this will be the agenda and the goals of the lesson. So I'll um, leave this to Nick. Great, thanks, Alex. So, um, the goal of the lesson today, um, we're going to start with a warm-up activity. We're going to try to place some key events from U.S. history onto a timeline. We're then going to do an overview of U.S. history where we'll talk about the most important events and what you need to know um, to pass maturita. Uh, we'll focus on some vocabulary words and then the last part of the presentation, we will open it up to you all for questions. Um, also throughout this presentation, if you have questions, please feel free to unmute yourself or type it in the chat and we will make sure to answer those questions. So the goal of this lesson is that afterwards you will all be experts in US history but more importantly, you'll be able to recall the important uh, dates, names, and major events, and pass materita. And we do have a few materita tips as well for you all to keep in mind throughout the lesson. So the first is don't try to remember every small detail and every single date from American history. It's a lot and it can be difficult to try to remember all of these different details and numbers. Instead, really focus on the biggest events first, which we will be focusing on some big events in this presentation. And then if you're giving an oral or a spoken response, think about this historic event like a story. So you wanna think about when did it take place? Where did it take place? What was the cause of the event? Who were the important people involved? What was the outcome? So you're thinking of it more so like a story. Like imagine you had watched a movie uh, and now you're recalling that whole story. So by thinking of it um, in this way, it can be a little bit easier to give those responses. Also a tip for um, any teachers on the call as well is that learning US history will also help students to become more familiar with important US cities, learn about some US holidays, and have a better understanding of US government. So I know these are all topics that can come up on Maturita, 
So U.S. history really hits a lot of these main topics, and we will be mentioning some of these throughout our presentation as well, so you get a little bit of extra information um, that can help you out with the Maturita. All right. So um, now it is time for our warm up. So on the screen, you can see here that we have a timeline with different dates. What we would like for you to do is to match the correct letter of the event with the correct date we see here on the timeline. So you can put your answers in the chat, the letters in the correct order that we see on the timeline, and then we will review it together as a group. Um, and so we'll give you about two minutes or so to do that. Again, you want to match the letter of the event with the correct date on the timeline. So we'll give you about two minutes to work on that. If you have any questions, you can let us know. Great, I see some answers coming in through the chat. You guys are good at this. Seeing a lot of uh, really good answers. We'll just take a little bit longer so everyone has a chance and then we'll go over them. All right. So yeah, as Nick mentioned, we're seeing some great answers coming through in the chat. Um, thank you, everybody who posted your answers there. Um, so we can take a chance to go over this now. So our first date that we have here is 1492. So the correct event was B, Col uh, Christopher Columbus comes to America. Um, and again, we will be going through these events in our presentation as well. But just to sort of get our heads adjusted to the timeline. And then we had in 1775 to 1783, D, the Revolutionary War. From 1861 to 1865, we had the American Civil War. Uh, and we'll be paying a lot of attention to these two events. They were very important events in US history, so we'll spend a lot of time with these two. From 1929 to 1939, we had the Great Depression. And again, we'll go over what that means and what that event was. In 1941, the US enters into World War II. And 1963 is MLK's I Have a Dream speech or Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. In 2001, we had the events of September 11th. So lastly, in 2008, we had Barack Obama becomes president. So again, we saw some really great answers in the chat. Um, and it seems like 
a lot of people have a good idea of where these events fall on a timeline. So that sounds great. And so we'll pause here. Does anybody have any questions so far about anything? Again, you can either unmute or post them in the chat. All right. And if not, we will continue on. Um, so we're going to go into some of the first events of early America and Christopher Columbus. So who was Christopher Columbus? He was an Italian explorer who was paid by Spain to sail across the Atlantic Ocean to find a path to Asia. So we can see him right here. And in 1492, Columbus landed in North America. So we can see that here in this photo or in this painting. And Columbus, when he was there, he saw all of these people and animals and plants and different things on this new land. So Columbus went back to Spain and told them about all of these things that he saw in North America. So the key idea to know here about Christopher Columbus is that after Columbus's travels, Europeans understood that there are new resources and land across the ocean. So now they knew that there was this new space that they could go to to get things like sugar or um, tobacco, different plants and different resources. Um, I can also note here that in the United States, we have a holiday that's called Christopher Columbus Day that happens in October. It's a bit of a controversial holiday, meaning some people really don't like it because Christopher Columbus really did not discover North America. There were already lots of people living here, but he did come and he took the land from them um, and did it so in a very violent way. So we do have a US holiday called Columbus Day in October, but it's very controversial. Some people don't like it. So then now that the Europeans know that there is this land across the ocean, they begin to come over to this land to settle and to build new communities there. And one of the first groups that came was the pilgrims. So the pilgrims were a group of people who left England in search of religious freedom, meaning the idea that a person can choose any religious belief um, without fear of their government um, or without anybody stopping them from doing so. So they sailed to North America on a ship called the Mayflower in 1620, and they landed in present day Massachusetts, it's my state, where they formed the Plymouth Colony. And we have this word colony here, and I promise we're going to talk a little bit more about this word colony because it does become important as we move forward. But the key idea here is that the pilgrims were some of the first Europeans to form a large community in America. So as the years go on, more people come over from Europe to come to North America. So we again had this word colony. So a colony is a community under the control of a foreign power, but are physically separate. So what does this mean? Well, when we talk about America and the history of the United States, we're talking about the 13 American colonies, which we can see here in red on this map. The American colonies were ruled by the British. So the British were far away across the ocean but they still ruled over these 13 American colonies. The British still had power over all of these communities. And then we'll also hear the word colonist. And again, when we're talking about US history, we're usually talking about the American colonists. These are the people who form a community in a new area. So the American colonists wanted to be free from the British. So the colonists were the people who were living here in these colonies when we're speaking about US history. All right, so now we'll move into the American Revolutionary War, 
and look at some of the causes, the why the war happened. So from 1764 to 1774, the British tried to enforce many different taxes or additional fees on the American colonists. These taxes were placed on things like tea, sugar, paper, and other goods. So when there's a tax on something, that would mean, for example, a colonist was paying $1 for a cup of tea, but then the British put a new tax on that tea. So now it costs maybe a dollar and 10 cents. It's that extra fee, the extra 10 cents on that item. And that money is gonna go back to the British government. Taxes always give money to the government. So the American colonists really didn't like this. They didn't want to be giving this money to the British. They didn't like these taxes. So the American colonists, they were angry and they refused to pay the taxes. They did not pay them. The colonists wanted more representation in the government. And representation is a person or an organization to speak or act for another. So for the American colonists, they really wanted to have one of their own people, one of their American colonists, to be able to go to the British parliament, to their government, and give them a voice, be able to speak and say, we don't like these taxes, we think they're unfair, and we really want to be able to say something about our government. And so the colonists grew united in their anger with the British, and they agreed to just stop buying British goods. So when we think about the 13 colonies, they're pretty far apart on the map, but they all became very united in their anger against the British. So the key idea here is that American colonists did not want to follow the British rules that they felt were unfair. And just to quickly note, uh, again, we want to talk maybe about U.S. cities. Um, this U.S. city of Boston, which is my home city, this is where many of the events that led to the American Revolution happened. So a lot of the first battles were fought in and around Boston. Um, we had this event that was called the Boston Tea Party, where people went onto these ships with British tea and just threw it into the ocean. Um, so a lot of the first events of the Revolutionary War happened in Boston. So in case you should need any facts about a U.S. city, um, there's something about Boston. And I take a lot of pride in it since it is my hometown. So then the Revolutionary War begins in 1775. So the 13 American colonies were led by George Washington. And this name might be familiar. Um, he would later become the first president of the United States. The colonists fought to gain their independence or their freedom from the British. And we can see in these pictures here, this is George Washington in both of these. Um, and he's going on to become the first president once the war is over. So the war is also known as the American War of Independence. So you might hear Revolutionary War or American War for Independence. They're the same. And again, the key idea here is the American colonists fought to have their own country. They wanted independence. They wanted freedom from the British. So in 1776, we have this document called the Declaration of Independence. So Thomas Jefferson, who would later become the third US president, wrote the first draft of the Declaration of Independence. And when we say declaration, that means to announce, to say something. And of independence means, of course, that word for freedom, freedom from control. So the document explained why the American colonies wanted to separate from Britain. They said, you know, these taxes are ridiculous. We want to have our own government with representation. And these are all of the reasons why we should be our own independent country. 
Uh, the Declaration of Independence was edited by a group of men uh, and then adopted or formally accepted by the American Congress on July 4th in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And now that date, July 4th, might sound familiar. And that is because it is our uh, a big holiday in the US, Independence Day, the 4th of July. Um, so this is the reason why we celebrate the 4th of July. So another maturity tip here is that if you remember this information that the Declaration of Independence was adopted on July 4th in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, that gives you information about US history, about the holiday of the 4th of July, as well as about that city, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So you get to get some information that can cover many topics in the Maturita. All right. And then, so we're coming to the end of the war now. So in 1783, the American colonies in Great Britain signed a peace treaty, which is an agreement to end the war. Uh, and it's called the Treaty of Paris, which officially accepted American independence and ended the war. So Great Britain said, okay, fine, you fought a really great war. We're gonna let you go. You can be your own country. And now that America has become its own country, they need a, a good, strong government. So this is why they write the Constitution of the United States, which is written a few years later in 1787. And it established the government and laws of America. And we still follow this constitution today. Um, so it still sort of controls our government. Uh, it guaranteed certain rights to all citizens, rights being freedoms protected by the law. So an example is the right to speak freely or very famously, the right to bear arms, the right to own guns in the United States. This is all written in our constitution. So the key idea here is that there are three important documents that were created because of the Revolutionary War. These are the Declaration of Independence, which said why we wanted to be our own country, the Treaty of Paris, which was the peace treaty ending the war, and the US Constitution, which established our government and laws. All right, and so I'm gonna pause here for a second. It was a lot of information. Uh, I feel really passionate about the American Revolution since it happened so close to my home. Um, but if there's any questions, we can take a moment to, to unmute to ask questions or you can put them in the chat. And if not, we are going to go over to this check for understanding. So again, we're going to pause here and you'll see on your screen three questions. Um, each are multiple choice question. So um, again, you can put in the chat what you think the correct answers are for these three questions and then we'll go over them. So this is just a review of the information we heard earlier. Um, and yeah, I'll give you all about two minutes or so to take a look at that. And again, you can post your answers in the chat. All right, I'm seeing a lot of answers coming through. Thank you, everyone. All right, so we'll take a few more moments here. All right, great. 
So we're going to start to go over some of these. Again, thank you for everyone who posted in the chat. So our first question here, what were the main causes of the American Revolution? So we had the British place many taxes on American goods. Um, the colonists wanted more representation in the government. They wanted a voice. They wanted more say. The colonists became united in their anger towards the British. So for this first one, the correct answer is D. It is all of the above. All of these things sort of led to the war. Um, the colonists were able to kind of form together to make their own army because they all really didn't like the British. Uh, and they wanted to have their own government, um, with their own voice, and they really did not like those taxes. All right, and then we had number two, once the United States became an independent country, who was the first president? This one is George Washington. He was our nation's first president. What is the correct order of the most important documents that were created as a result of the Revolutionary War? For this one, it was first the Declaration of Independence, um, which said why they wanted to be their own country, then the Treaty of Paris, it ended the war, it um, let the United States be its own country. And then finally, the US Constitution. Now that they were independent, they needed a government with laws. Um, so this is the correct order of those documents. All right, great. So thank you for following me on my journey of the American Revolution. Again, an event I really enjoy talking about. I'm now going to pass it over to Nick, who is going to talk about the Civil War. Great, thank you. So the next major event in American history that we wanted to focus on was the American Civil War. The American Civil War began in 1861 and began with a disagreement over slavery. So slavery, of course, is when uh, one group of people owns another group of people. Um, in America, slavery was quite violent um, and people who initially had been brought to America from Africa um, and then had families here and, and children were forced to work for no pay. And it was a really terrible thing in American history and this is exactly what led to the Civil War. So when we talk about the Civil War, the northern states, so the states mostly in the top half of the country, wanted to end slavery. And the states in the southern half of the country, or the bottom half, wanted to keep slavery. Um, the states in the South, not only did they want to end slavery, but they fought a war to create their own country so that they were allowed to do so. Um, so this was a war about slavery that really divided America into two halves. Um, so we had the United States on, on the top part and we had this, this other rebellion um, in, the, in the bottom part. Uh, and these two different sides of America were fighting against each other. Sometimes uh, parents were fighting against their children, um, friends fighting on different sides of the war. It was really a terrible moment in American history, but one that's really important because the, the results of which uh, still play out today in a little way. So here is a map for you all. So when we talk about the northern states, um, we might also refer to those states as the Union. So these are states like New York and Pennsylvania, um, and it includes Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. So Washington, D.C. is part of America. So the northern states were really fighting as the United States of America. Sometimes you might refer to them as the Union, um, but the North, the Union, 
United States of America uh, are all the same, uh, same way of saying the same thing when talking about the Civil War. The Southern states, so we can see in the bottom here in purple, were known as the Confederacy, and they fought as the Confederate States of America. So in order to keep slavery, they had to, they tried to create their own country and, and become their own Confederate States of America. So this map is really great because it does show um, the states on the different sides of the Civil War. And the yellow is territory that, or places that the United States owned, but there weren't enough people there yet for them to become states. Excellent. So some of you may recognize this man as maybe one of the most important people in American history. For those on the Zoom call who know me, know that Abraham Lincoln is my hero. Um, Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president of the United States and was president during the Civil War. Now, because he was president during the Civil War, he was also the top military leader for the Union Army. So Abraham Lincoln um, and another general called Grant were in charge of running the U.S. Army during the Civil War. Importantly, in 1863, Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, kind of like a law, which freed the slaves in the southern states. This was one of the most important laws ever made in American history. So a lot of people at the time loved Lincoln because he freed the slaves with this law. Um, but there was still a little bit more work to do. Um, so many slaves at the time thought that Lincoln was a hero, but the 13th Amendment, the word amendment here is an extra law. It's a little fix to the U.S. Constitution. The 13th Amendment made sla slavery illegal forever. So after the Civil War, we had the 13th Amendment, the 14th, the 15th. Um, these were all fixes to the Constitution to make America better and stronger, and mostly make slavery illegal. Great, so we, we covered a lot in a short amount of time, but here we have some fill in the blank questions. Um, let's see how we do with this one. So feel free to drop your answers in the chat. Just do one and then uh, put your answer. You've been doing a great job with this already. I'm seeing some good answers in the chat, which is exciting. These are all hard questions. So if you're able to get these, that's really great. Just give everyone a moment. Wow, fantastic. Okay, great. I think that we're able to go over them now. People seem to have done really well in the chat. And these were really hard questions. So you are all doing a great job with them.
So let's reveal the answer to the first question. Yes, so during the Civil War, the Southern states, so if we remember the bottom part of America, was known as the Confederacy, or the Confederate States of America. Great, good for you guys, all of you who got that right in the chat, it's awesome. Uh, and they fought to keep slavery, right? These were the people who wanted to keep slavery. Two, in 1863, Abraham Lincoln signs the Emancipation Proclamation to free the slaves. Yes, Abraham Lincoln led the way uh, to make slavery illegal in the United States. That's absolutely correct. And number three, when a new law is added to the U.S. Constitution, it is called an amendment. Yes, it is called an amendment. Um, great job. I'm seeing a ton of correct answers in the chat. You should be proud of yourselves. Excellent. Yeah, That's really funny. great job, everybody. All right, great. So now that we've talked about the American Revolution and the Civil War, these were events that were really specific to the United States. They were sort of the foundation for the country that we have today. So now we're going to quickly talk about the US's involvement in the rest of the world and things that really affected the whole world moving forward. So the first of these is the American involvement in World War I. So the US entered World War I in 1917 and was allied with Britain, France, and Russia and the countries on that side of the war. Allied means they were working together with, united with, they joined with Britain, France, and Russia. Um, and you might notice the, the uh, First World War started in 1914, I think. So the US was a few years late to joining this war. Something to keep in mind when it comes to the United States in the world wars is that the, the US is made up of people from all over the world. So many people in the US at the time and today were from Britain and France and Russia, but also from Germany and Austria-Hungary at the time. Um, so people were coming from all over the world and lived in the United States. So the US government was a little nervous about joining the World War because they thought that the public might become angry with one another. It might cause feuds and divides and arguments in the country if they join the war. So this was one of the reasons why they were a little bit late to join the war. And it's just something to keep in mind as we do talk about the world wars. Um, and then after World War I, the US economy was doing really well. Um, people were making a lot of money throughout the 20s, um, and people in the US were living a pretty good life. A lot of people were very wealthy and had a lot of money. But in 1929, the stock market crashed, and the country fell into a depression, meaning the economy went down. So during this time, many people did not have jobs and could not afford food or housing. And this economic depression, again, a time where there was not a lot of money in the country. This was the same um, throughout Europe, as I'm sure you know. There was an economic depression there as well and in other parts of the world. So this was a really difficult time for the US um, and you know, a very sad time for the country, but also a difficult time for the rest of the world as well. And then came World War II. So the US entered World War II in 1941 after the attack by Japan on Pearl Harbor, which is a military camp in Hawaii. Um, the war created more jobs for Americans, which ended the Great Depression. So again, the Great Depression was a time where people didn't have much money. There weren't a lot of jobs, but 
because of the war, they needed to send soldiers overseas. They needed to build airplanes and machines and weapons. They needed people to make uniforms for the soldiers. So all of these things created more jobs in the United States. And in 1945, the US dropped two atomic bombs on Japan, leading them to surrender or to give up the war. Uh, Germany had surrendered a few months earlier. So this really sort of ended World War II. Um, you know, there's a lot to say about World War II and the US, their involvement, but I'll try to keep it brief here. Um, but of course, if you ever want to learn more, there's lots of great like YouTube videos and different resources online that we can look at. All right, and I'll pass it back over to Nick. Great. So uh, another important event or a really a period of time in American history is the Cold War, right? So we have the United States on one side, we have the Soviet Union on the other side, and it was a long struggle for power. Um, this is something that you are all familiar with, um, but something that was really important because it shaped a lot of really important events in US and world history. So this competition, this power competition, created conflicts in Europe, Asia, Africa, South America, everyone was racing for power. One of the things it also did was it created the space race, the race to get uh, man into space, and then the race to get man onto the moon. Um, so lots of events kind of came out of this uh, competition for power. And another thing that we want to talk about is really pivotal in American history or important um, in American history is the American Civil Rights Movement. So civil rights is very similar to human rights. Um, just this past Monday, we celebrated Dr. Martin Luther King Jr who gave his famous I Have a Dream speech on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, DC. So the speech was an important fight, uh, an important part of the fight to end racism in America, um, which many consider to be continuing today. And it tried to make discrimination against the law. So the two words I wanna focus on here, speech, right, is what I'm doing now, speaking to you all. Martin Luther King was an amazing speaker. He could get crowds of thousands of people to be excited by what he was saying. Another great speaker was Abraham Lincoln. The other vocab word is discrimination. Discrimination is when laws are unfair to people just because of the color of their skin. So Martin Luther King Jr. tried to end that. So some of the important, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the important laws that were passed um, were civil rights laws. Uh, these were laws that made it made discrimination illegal, and it made sure that all Americans with any color skin could vote. And an important part of this movement were peaceful protests. Protest has a really long and important history in America and in many other countries around the world as well. Um, Martin Luther King Jr. was a huge believer in peaceful protest. And that was how they made their message really well heard. All right. We're skipping through a lot of history. Really quick, does anyone have any questions about the, the civil rights movement before we move on? Yes, and that's a great note. Yep, about MLK Day is another holiday. All right, um, so we can move along. We're gonna move along to some more recent uh, current events. Um, yeah, I think we're ready to move along. All right, great. 
Great. So as Nick mentioned, we are kind of skipping through a bit of history here, but we just want to quickly mention some more recent history in the United States. So one of which being the events of September 11th, 2001. So on this day, terrorists attacked New York City and Washington, D.C. The attack destroyed the World Trade Center, which are these buildings here. It was um, a group of buildings. Um, as well as part of the Pentagon, which we can see over here. The World Trade Center is in, well, was in New York City, and the Pentagon is in Washington, D.C. It's where the security is uh, for the American government. Um, the World Trade Center now has a new tower, as well as a museum to remember those who died in the attacks. This was a really uh, life-changing moment for Americans. It was really difficult to watch that footage of planes crashing into these towers and into these buildings. Um, a really sad day for the United States. Um, and we now on every September 11th, every year, it, it's a day of remembrance, a day to remember the events that happened and to, to take a moment to, to think about those lives that were lost. So it was a really sad time for the United States um, and it did change how the US sort of interacts with the world. And this sort of leads to um, Americans involvement in the Iraq war. Um, in 2003, the United States, including many of its European allies, so the noun uh, ally, allied can be a verb, and allies is like your noun, um, so their partners in the war, entered into a war with Iraq. Um, Iraq is located in what Americans call the Middle East, um, and the U.S. also entered into war in Afghanistan a few years earlier as well. This war is still sort of ongoing. We still have soldiers over in these part in this part of the world and in these countries. Um, we don't really have a final outcome of this war yet. It's still something that sort of uh, lingers or stays in um, the current day. Uh, and then uh, bringing us into more modern history, we had uh, President Barack Obama who in 2008 was elected or chosen by votes, the people voted for him uh, to become president of the United States. Obama was the first and only African-American president in the history of the United States. So he served for the maximum of eight years for an American president. And then once he served his eight years, um, Donald Trump became our next president. And then Nick, if you want to mention about these recent, very recent events that we had. Sure. So as I'm sure all of you know, yesterday, President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris were sworn in, which means they officially became president and vice president of the United States. And this is another historic moment and an important first. Kamala Harris is the first woman to be vice president, um, also of African-American and Asian descent. So uh, an exciting day in American history. Of course, um, yesterday was also an, uh, uh, an important day in American history as we moved from Obama to President Trump to uh, President Biden. All right, and great. So that sort of brings us literally to today, um, as he was brought into office yesterday. Um, so just as a quick review, so we looked at some of the key foundational events in US history being the Revolutionary War and the Civil War, both very important to our country's history. Then we moved more towards the US and sort of its involvement with the rest of the world, um, looking at the World Wars, the Great Depression, the Cold War, and then moved into more modern history, September 11th, the Iraq War, um, the election of President Obama, and now President Biden. So this was just, of course, a brief overview of US history. And we would love to open up the floor to any questions that you might have either about US history in this presentation 
or if you have any other questions about the United States or about English, um, we're happy to hear any questions. Um, again, you can post those in the chat or you can feel free to unmute and Nick and I would be happy to answer. I'd also like to just quickly say if you should have anything that you would like to talk with us uh, further about, you can feel free to email us. Our emails are up here on the screen. I'm here, alexlinas at gmail.com, and Nick is nazule at villanova.edu. So another way to, to ask us questions if you'd like. But for right now, we will open up the floor. All right. So again, you can feel free to unmute or to place any questions in the chat. And I'll also quickly use this time to say, um, in the outline that we'll provide to you um, to give, again, an overview of what we talked about today, there are some resources at the end that I highly recommend. Things like YouTube channels, podcasts, Instagram accounts, and films that can all help you to practice English and U.S. history. I think films are a really great way of learning about U.S. history because you get some of those emotions and feelings. Um, so it's a really nice way to sort of learn more about specific events that have happened. So, uh, you know, you can feel free to check those out. All right, so I see a question in the chat. Uh, Nick, would you like to take it? Sure. Yeah, so we got a question about Black Lives Matter. So I'm sure um, some of you are aware in the news that the past couple of years, there have been lots of protests in the United States. And Black Lives Matter is um, part of that protest movement. Um, so specifically, Black Lives Matter um, formed as a response to to issues of violence, particularly related to um, kind of sad events uh, involving police officers. That's where the movement came from. But we don't see, maybe you might wonder, is it still happening? Um, we don't see as many protests um, now as maybe we did last year. Um, so you're right that the, there's not as many protests now as last year, but Black Lives Matter is still um, as an organization is still continuing. And I'm, I imagine that there will be more protests in the future. Um, it's not, it's a little bit different, but it's not totally different from the protests in the 1960s with Martin Luther King Jr. Um, so just another example of kind of America having a, a history of protest. Yep, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. Okay, so you were getting a lot of questions. So I had one question that was, what do you think about January 6th? So I'm assuming this is the, the attack on the US Capitol. Um, so there's a lot that can be said about that event. So what happened on January 6th was a group of a group of people um, went to the US Capitol building uh, where our Congress was, where our politicians were having a vote on whether or not to officially say that Joe Biden will be our next president. Um, so this group of people came during that time and they attacked the US Capitol, they broke down the windows and they went inside to try to stop this vote from happening. They wanted Trump to be able to stay president and did not want to accept uh, President Biden as our next president. So uh, there's a lot to be said about this event. I think it just really shows how politically divided the US is right now. Um, president Trump was just a very, um, he was a very strong figure in politics in the sense that some people really, really liked him but other people really, really hated him. Um, and these two groups are sort of battling against each other in our country today. And that's sort of what led to these events that happened at the Capitol. 
it will definitely be a very historic moment that I'm sure people will learn about in their textbooks um, in the future. Um, but it was a, it's, a, it's a sad day for the US. It really shows how divided we are. And a lot of people sort of compared it to the events in the Civil War as well, um, showing the divide between people. Great. We're getting a lot of good questions. I'm going to take another one. Um, we had a question about movies, about historical movies. Um, and the question is, do you have any tips on American movies that are historically accurate? From what I've heard, directors don't usually do a good job at depicting the events accurately. That's a phenomenal question. So we have an outline that we'll, we will send to you all. And at the bottom of that outline, it's a timeline of all the events. At the bottom, we have resources for students and teachers. And it includes a list of um, good history movies. Um, there's great movies about the civil rights movement, Abraham Lincoln, the Revolutionary War. We'll send that to you all. And then I see we have, um, hi, I'd like to ask a question about Biden. There's some controversy. What is it about? So again, I think that sort of relates to what happened on January 6th at the Capitol building. There are um, some people that really believe that um, Donald Trump should continue to be our president. Um, and then others that believe that Biden won the election fairly. So what sort of happened here is that our election, which happened in November, it was very close. And uh, a lot of people were sending in their votes by mail due to coronavirus and not wanting to vote in person. Um, and this is sort of the first time that that's really happened. So people, some people believed that these votes were not accurate, that some things were incorrect, the votes were very close, they wanted things to be recounted. Um, so some people believe for all of these reasons that Biden didn't actually get elected fairly, that there was some sort of um, uh, incorrect counting or that the way we were casting votes was not legal. Um, but at the end of the day, um, our government has looked into these things and has said that Joe Biden did win the election fairly. Uh, and that all of these um, ideas that it was somehow unfair are incorrect. However, because of the internet uh, and people are very connected, people are able to really chat about their ideas and what they think. Um, and it's grown to be this, what we call a conspiracy theory that uh, Trump won the election. And therefore some people don't believe Biden should be our president. Uh, again, it kind of gets a bit complicated, but it's the divide between our country that's happening right now. Thanks, Alex. You did a great job of explaining that. I have, we're just getting questions, so I have another one I'm going to take. Um, we had a question about which American president is the most popular among Americans? Um, there's actually a whole host of um, kind of... Uh, research to figure this out. And I can say that if you ask historians, people who study history, they will probably tell you that the best presidents in American history um, will be Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, and Franklin Delano Roosevelt, or FDR. FDR was president during World War II in America. Um, in fact, I can cite my sources and I will send you a link with all of that. All right, excellent. Thanks for that, Nick. And thank you for sending those resources through. Um, okay, so I, I'm getting quite a few questions. So I just wanna make sure I let me know if I miss anybody or if I'm repeating a question. But I see that there is one that says, what do you think was the saddest event that has happened? Um, and I think to say throughout all of US history, it's really hard to choose just one event. We've had a lot of really sad things happen in our history, unfortunately. 
something that doesn't always get talked about is um, when the colonists and people came to the United States, there were already millions of Native Americans living on this land. And in order for them to create their own sort of colonies, their own communities, their own cities, um, those colonists really needed to get rid of the Native Americans that were there. And the way they did that was unfortunately through violence um, and in many unfortunate circumstances, they killed many of those people. So I think this event is very sad. They estimate that throughout the beginning of the United States, millions of Native people were killed um, who were on that land. This is something that's really sad and we don't always talk about it. But again, the Civil War was a really sad time for our country, the Great Depression, 9-11. Um, these are all really sad times. Um, and coronavirus today, again, a really, really terrible time for our country. So it's hard to choose just one. All right. Thank you, Alex. I have one more that is a really interesting question. And I'll read the question aloud if we have time. Christina, we do. Okay, great. Um, the question is, do you happen to know if the Founding Fathers ever publicly discussed that women are not meant to be equal when drafting the Declaration and that it was just for white men, or was it discussed around that time in newspapers and or pamphlets? That's an excellent question, and that those kind of conversations are studied a lot by historians, particularly historians of the American Revolution. So the Declaration of Independence has the line, all men are created equal, which is a very big thing to say. And they knew that. They knew it was a big thing to say when they said that. But your question accurately gets to the point where that was not necessarily really true at the time. There was still slavery happening. Um, you couldn't vote unless you were a man. You couldn't vote unless you had a certain size of land. There were lots of requirements to be able to participate in government. So on the one hand, you have language that is really strong and very forward looking and is very inclusive of everybody. But in practice, you had laws that were not there yet, right? We would. It would take us a long time to get there. We can talk about women's suffrage in the early 20th century, but it would take hundreds of years for, for women to get the right to vote, unfortunately. Um, many years for African Americans to get the right to vote, um, former slaves to get the right to vote. So those were all things that had to be worked out. Um, I, I hope that answers your question. Um, it's, it's a complicated question, but I hope that <laughs> answers it a little bit. And then I'm not sure if we answered this already, but I see a question. Do you have any tips for materials I can use when teaching history? Um, and so again, in the outline that we're gonna be sending, there are some resources at the bottom that teachers and students can both use to learn a little bit more about US history. One of which is a really great YouTube channel um, that has just short videos that will go over different events. So for example, the Revolutionary War, and they use lots of pictures and animation um, and really simple language to explain the uh, event really well. So I do recommend using those sorts of videos. And again, you'll see those resources um, when the outline is sent. We have another question about why the biggest cities are usually not the capitals of their states. Um, Illinois, Springfield, not Chicago, and New York, right? New York City is not the capital of New York State. It's this uh, tiny town, well, a smaller <laughs> city called Albany. Um, that's a great question, and I don't really know the answer to it. Alex, any ideas? <laughs> I also, I am not sure about that. I think what you said, Mikal, about the the funding, perhaps, uh, maybe they, they don't want to put too much attention only to big cities. 
Um, in some cases, they want to put the capital in more of the center of the state so that it's easy for everyone to get to. But in my state, Massachusetts, Boston is the biggest city and it is the capital. So sometimes it does happen that way. Not really sure why though. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, these very, really excellent questions from the audience. And thank you to Alex and Nick for your wonderful presentation. Um, I had a wonderful time. I learned many new things and I hope everyone else did as well. Uh, we are always happy to see many questions. And as we already sneaked into the chat, don't forget to check out the additional resources, uh, the presentation together with the outline that should help you for your Maturita exam and um, other resources for podcasts, YouTube videos and movies are available on the links I shared. Um, so feel free to use those resources. There are also resources for the other themes that we have already covered and that we will cover in the future. Um, so we hope you will stay um, in touch with us and you will stay, uh, you will keep watching our next life lessons. Um, I also wanted to uh, thank the, uh, our, all our mentors who participated from all the various cities and towns and villages in the Czech Republic. It was uh, amazing. Uh, seeing the map with many flags. And please, uh, the last request I would like to make is um, click on the feedback form in the chat window before you leave the presentation and the feedback form should not take you more than two to three minutes. And we really appreciate your feedback because it helps us to make uh, the following lessons more uh, geared more towards your specific needs. So please help us with that. And with that, I would like to thank Alex and Nick again, and um, goodbye. We will see you soon, hopefully, online or in person. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much. It's been awesome. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs>